Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today we are going to be talking about a special kind of patent application called a continuation application, and it can be useful for turning one patent into multiple patents. So let's see how that could work. First, why would we even want to have multiple patents? Isn't one patent good enough? Well, there are a few good reasons for multiple patents. Let's see. First, more patents typically mean more protection, covering different areas or variations in your invention. Second, multiple patents for a given technology define a portfolio, which is a collection of issued, enforced patents, and a portfolio can be a good way to add value to your company. This is especially true for smaller companies such as startups. In some situations, a small company with a good patent portfolio can receive an increased valuation, which can cause other larger companies to want to buy your company for its patent portfolio. So, those are some good benefits indeed. Now, let's explore a situation where a continuation patent application could be used. So when the Patent Office finally agrees that you have some patentable subject matter, they will send out a Notice of Allowance. This basically says, hey, you've got some patent claims here that we can allow. Send in the required fees, and this patent will issue within the next few months. Now very often, a subset of the final claims from your patent application are allowed, while another subset of claims is not allowed. This is a common scenario. Here in our example, claims 6 to 10 are allowed, while claims 1 to 5 are not. And in response to this, a common strategy in this situation is to accept the allowed claims, which are 6 to 10 in our example, and those claims will, in a few months' time, become part of patent number 1. Now here is where the continuation comes in. Before that patent number 1 issues, a continuation patent application is filed with some new claims. And what exactly goes into that continuation patent application? Let's take a look. Let's see what's different between the original, which is sometimes called the parent application, and the new application, which is filed as a continuation type of application. Well, they both use the same written description section, so the same write-up that describes your invention is used for both. They both use the same set of drawings, so any drawings you had in the first application will be used for the second application. They differ in the claims. The continuation application has a new set of claims. Now that set of claims must be based on things disclosed and described in the existing written description and drawings. So basically that means, in order to take advantage of this type of application, we need to claim things that were described in the written description and drawings of the original application. These are essentially copied over to make the new patent application. Now here are some advantages of doing this. Firstly, the preparation costs for the continuation application are typically much lower than for the original patent application. Why is that? Well, if you hired a professional to make your original patent application, they had to do the written description, the drawings, and the claims. And for this new continuation application, the only thing that needs to be made new is the claims. The drawings and written description are reused from the previous application, and thus, attorneys and agents will typically charge much less since there is much less labor involved. Another benefit is that you receive the filing date of the parent application. And let's illustrate this with a timeline. Suppose you filed the first patent application in January of 2021. Then, at some time later, let's say August of 2023, you get your notice of allowance. There are some claims that can be issued in a patent. That's great news. You pay your fee for issuing, and then, before that patent actually does issue, you file the continuation patent application. Here, we are doing this in the following month, September of 2023. Then, let's say in October 2023, your first patent issues. So the important thing to show here is that patent application number two is filed before patent number one issues. And that allows patent application number two to have an effective filing date of the first patent application, which is January 2021. 
And that serves to limit how much prior art the patent office can use against your second patent application. Basically, references that came out after January of 2021 can't be used against you for your second patent application. And that can help improve your chances of getting a second patent to issue. So let's recap. Typically, continuation patent applications are used when you know you are going to get a patent on something you previously filed. We can't add new details to the written description in this type of patent application. There are other strategies when you have some new developments, and we'll cover that in a different episode. Again, if you have a company or are planning to start one for your technology, a portfolio of patents can make your company more valuable and can sometimes assist in getting funding and or selling your company to a larger one. And finally, by having more patents issued, you have claims that can be used to help you have more coverage for your invention. So hopefully that information was helpful and interesting to you. Please like and subscribe and share if you enjoyed the content. And thank you again for watching.